Welcome back. We're here to preview Sunday's game on the final day of the Premier League season between Hull City and Manchester United. And that will start with Hull. You know, it's a massive game for them. They have to win to stay up. Yeah, they have to win. It's the end of the season. Last three games have been really just devastating for them, hasn't it? Like I say, they lost to Arsenal. Big ones against Burnley where they got beat. And that, that was just massive. You know, at home to Burnley who went down with the win. And you're thinking Burnley at home, you have to win that game. Last time out against Spurs, I mean, a lot of people, I fancied them as well to go there and get something. A lot of people fancied them Spurs this season, picking off a little bit, but the game itself, it was tight, tight for the early spells, you know, a lot of possession in midfield, but when Spurs got the first goal, it was, you know, Chadley wasn't got the first goal, and it was difficult for Hull, and then obviously it went 2-0, Danny Rose sticks one in the top corner and with his red hair, and then uh, it, it's, it's always difficult to come back from that scoreline, especially when you're Hull and you're struggling at the bottom, confidence is obviously low, and like I mentioned, you know, losing against Arsenal and Spurs is... Not expected, but it's not, you know, like unbelievable. But losing at home to Burnley in that game is just, if they'd have won that game, like I said, they've been sitting outside the relegation zone, they could lose this game and stay up. But like you mentioned, they have to win this game. Draw's not good enough. Manchester, it's probably good for them that United lost a uh, drill of Arsenal, sorry, last week because, you know, top, top four, four, fourth now, obviously secure, and United, and it's not like they have to win to finish in the top four, which some thought it might come down to the final day of the season, but Liverpool have been tailed off. So it's disappointing for Hull and it's really tough to see him staying up on the final weekend. Definitely, yeah. I mean, you talk about the scenarios. We're filming this on Wednesday before Sunderland's game with Arsenal. So, you know, if some, you know, we'd expect Sunderland to probably look, because their final two games of the season, both away at Arsenal and Chelsea. So, really tough way for Sunderland to finish the season. So, say, as we expect, they lose both of those games. They're sitting three points above Hull in the table with the worst goal difference as well. So, you know, the whole win, that definitely sent, keeps them up, you know, if Sunderland lose both their games, as we expect. But, you know, Newcastle, the team, just above the bottom three, sitting two points above. They play West Ham at home. You know, West Ham been poor sort of in the last couple of months. They haven't got anything to play for. So even though Newcastle, you know, it's one point out of 30, I think they've got, you know, they've finished the season horrendously. But you'd probably expect them to win that game at home to West Ham, even though, you know, they go into that in terrible form. So it's certainly... Really difficult for Hull to stay up, but like you say, that Burnley defeat, it was just a it was a huge one, wasn't it? You know, Burnley were all butt down going into that, and like you say, they, they went down by beating Harlan, not to score against Burnley at home, you know, really tough for them, and Hull, you know, they're odds on favourites now, and it really does look like they'll be, you know, going down after just two seasons mm. in the Premier League. Obviously, manager Steve Bruce has come out and talked about the injury situation and players he's had missing, and to be fair, obviously, Jelovic is, is a big one for me, he always sort of offers a threat in the final third doesn't he doesn't his goal record was not amazing but he's always a threat as well and the army's the one as well i mean when he first came in i remember when he joined from west ham he was amazing wasn't he he's got a couple of goals in his first three games i think he played very well and michael dawson as well at the back injured and it's just it's tough going into a particular game once you've got the jake livermore incident as well you know for the coke tested positive for cocaine and i think it's difficult to have too much to say on that when you don't know the ins and outs you know personal situation i think jermaine Jean has come out and said you know he knows him for livermore from his spurs days and he, he had some personal stuff going on, so I don't think you can be really... Obviously, it's not ideal when he's let the club down, but without knowing the ins and outs, it's difficult to have too much of an opinion on that. But the players he has actually got missing is... I mean, it's interesting to see you talk about the players he's brought in with. Abel Hernandez, you know, the, he plays very well for his country, and Doyle's came in, he's done OK, and you're thinking, are they too good to go down? You look at the players they got through, the Huddleston in midfield is a player of life as well, you know, at the back, they're decent, but... It's just difficult, like I say, they've been two seasons of Premier League, it looks like they're probably going to go down. I think injuries has been a big blow for them, but like you say... If you look at their sort of squad and if you could name his strongest 11 most weeks, you'd expect Hull, you know, it would be good enough for them to stay yeah. up. But you look at what they had last season, they finished 16th to 37 points this season. You know, they got 34, so if they win this, they get 37 and that might be good enough to stay up again. But, you know, the old 40-point mark is sort of the one you say that should be good enough to get a safe and they're gonna, they've are they fallen short of that in the last two seasons. So you'd probably say, you know, they haven't really done enough to stay up the last two seasons. They managed it just about last season, but it doesn't look like they'll do so this year because you know, they play Man United, one of the best teams you know, in the league. And, you know, they were pretty good for most parts of last week. You know, it was, it was a big game against Arsenal, that one-all draw. You know, they certainly knew that you know, if they beat Arsenal, it really gave them a big chance of you finishing above them, getting that third spot, um, you know, which gets you automatic entry into the group stage of the Champions League. I think I saw uh, earlier today that they, they're going to be in pot two if they, do go, if they win their qualifying game. But... You know, that qualifying round for the Champions League group stage, you can draw some really tough teams. You know, I remember a few years back, I think Everton got Villarreal. That was a really tough game that Everton got that year. And, you know, certainly you can draw tough teams, but you'd expect United, you know, with all the players they've got, you know, you expect them to come through the qualifying round. And certainly for Van Gaal, you know, it's a decent achievement getting them back, you know, into the top four after, you know, finishing, was it seventh under Moyes last year? So, yeah, you know, it's a decent, I think, the game against Arsenal. I mean, interesting to see Chris Smalling named captain, you know, in the run up to that with New Wayne Rooney be out injured. And, Van Hal said, you know, I think Smalling is the leader of our defence, which, you know, quite surprising. I thought, you know, Smalling's had a good season, I think better than most expected, and I think it's 
he seems to have sort of maybe gone ahead of Phil Jones in yeah. maybe the centre back pecking order, which you know, say two years ago you would have said Jones has a lot more potential this morning, but this morning seems to have settled down. He's you know, he doesn't make as many errors. You know, Jones in the first half there, he almost gave away two goals. You know, there's the hilarious image of him sort of crawling on the ground. You know, that slow motion clip, and he heads it into Giroud on the floor. Exactly. So that was quite hilarious. And then he almost back passed it past the Hayer as well. So, you know, they they play well for that. But the second half, they didn't quite you know match the intensity of the first half. Arsenal came into it a bit more. And I mean, their equaliser was you know very fortunate. Arsenal, you know, the own goal from Tyler Black, who'd only just come on and. Yeah, well, it was unfortunate, but it's quite ironic that the minute De Gea, you know, it's the yeah. first time De Gea is. The, I think I saw a stat is the first shot on target uh, that United faced without De Gea this season, and it went it went yeah. in. So it's <laughs> quite unfortunate for them, and obviously Valdez coming in. But I think it was a decent point against Arsenal. They probably they obviously would have wanted to win that win that, but I think on the whole, you know, getting that top four finish has been pretty good for them. Yeah, I think obviously top four with the goal to start the season. You mentioned the Arsenal game. I think United played well for maybe an hour, and Arsenal probably had the last thirty minutes, didn't they? So. You know, one all, yeah, say so it's, it's a decent result. It's obviously disappointing they beat Arsenal earlier in the season, so they've been wanting to beat them twice. And, you know, the record against the top teams this season has been decent. I think they've taken one point from six against Chelsea, three against City, beat Liverpool twice, four against Arsenal, uh, four against Spurs as well. So it's been decent, you know, overall when you look at the record against, but there's been too many drop points elsewhere. And you mentioned the goalkeeping situation. Valdez obviously come on for his, his debut. He's played a couple times in the other 21s. But it's just a, it was a strange move in general. I mean, he's come on and. Does he go down a bit too early? Maybe I'm not sure if he, you know, obviously it's deflected over him, but it's really disappointing for them. It'd be interesting to see what happens next season if De Gea does go, which we all spe- expect him to. It's, it's one of those where nothing's really been said from his camp, which is, is not, I think it's quite respectful to both sides. You really don't think he's made up his mind yet, but obviously Manchester United had their players' awards on, um, on Tuesday night, and uh, he won the players' player again for the second consecutive season. First time since Cristiano Ronaldo did that, so. It shows what the players think of him and Van Howard, that hilarious speech after as well. And I think he actually mentioned De Gea as his player of the season, maybe to try and you know, sway him to, to maybe stay in either. You don't really know. I think that story's got a lot more to come. That's going to develop over the next few weeks. Be interesting to see what happens with that. But we link with Peter Cech from Chelsea. I'd be surprised if Chelsea let him to go to an Arsenal or a Manchester United. You can imagine Mourinho selling him to you know, maybe a PSG or something. Just to, you know, obviously he's a great keeper, but to go to Manchester United, that'd be strange. I mean, I think he'd be a good signer for United. He's a good keeper, isn't he? It'd be interesting what happens with Valdez though, because if Valdez goes there, he's number two, and then De Gea goes and he's number two again. This he didn't go to Manchester for the weather, that's for certain. So it'd be interesting to see what happens with that. But like I say, full this season on 69 points, five more than they had last season in seventh. So it shows the low total that's needed for full this season. I think what was it? Arsenal last season had 79 to finish fourth, which is quite incredible. Everton just missed out, so. Decent overall and Champions League next season if they obviously win the qualifier. Just quickly, as a United fan, who would you like to see? Say De Gea does go to Madrid as we expect, who would you like to see come in? Would you be happy Valdez just becoming number one or would you like, say, Petr Cech or maybe a Casillas or someone like that? I think Hugo Lloris is obviously the main one from Spurs. You know, you look at him, he's, he, I think he's itching to go, isn't he? You know, he's obviously wants Champions League football. He's, he's the captain of France, isn't he? So he's, he's obviously that type of player. And I think if De Gea does go, I think Lloris, I mean, Cech, Cech's a great kid as well, but I think Lloris is that bit younger. And he's got he's a bit more sort of I think he's better on the ball than Czech, so it'd be the one for me. Quite similar sort of playing style yeah. to Lloris as well, isn't he? So it might sort of work well there. But you anyway, know, back to this game, Hull versus United. What's your score prediction? I, th- I think it'd be a draw. here, yeah, last game of the season, you know, it's United not too much to play for. Probably like I say we filmed it before. If Arsenal win their game in hand against Sunderland, I think Arsenal play West Brom at home final weekend of the season. So you'd fancy them. United, I think, I think Hull will have a real go, and I think they won't. We just fall short. I think United hold them one one. Yeah. One one. Yeah, I think it'll be a draw as well. Hull obviously. You know, they'll be you know nervously depending on you know we, we don't know if Sunderland will be safe by then but if, if they lose to Arsenal tonight then you know they'll still be in the mix and all the whole fans you know be checking on their mm. phones you know that's the modern way these days you know you used to listen to the radio but you know you're, everyone's checking their phones and you know certainly I think the game could depend on you know what the crowd does because say you know West Ham score at Newcastle Chelsea go 2 up against Sunderland they're both losing Harder still 0-0 or they're drawing with Man U you know they'll certainly lift the crowd and interesting to see if they do it in, but I think, yeah, it'll be a draw as well. I'm going to go for a 2-2 draw, so both fancy score draws in this one. Thanks for watching.